Okay, welcome everyone to the February 14th, no, yeah, February 14th meeting of the Hadley Select Board. Um, tonight is also a tri-board meeting. Um, so the, for the first portion of the meeting, we're going to go over the um, initial budget presentation as well as the town meeting work. So um, we do have representatives here from the Finance Committee as well as the School Department. And uh, I guess I should say happy Valentine's for everybody watching at home. So, with that, David, do you want to start with the budget presentation? Sure, I'd be happy to. So, uh, <clears throat> the select board had set a deadline of February 7th for the uh, preliminary budget proposal. We had a nice storm, and so we deferred that till today. So, this budget is balanced based upon the projected revenues, transfers, and recommended expenditures. The select board established principles by which to adopt the FY19 budget. First, there shall be no general proposition to and a half override. Second, the budget shall um, provide level services where possible, um, allowing for higher increases in non-discretionary budgets such as state assessments and other fixed costs. Third, the, fire, the four firefighter positions that were created in FY18, that is this year's budget, are to be retained and funded sustainably for FY19. Fourth, in all areas of our control government shall be set on a sustainable course. That means that at a minimum the existing financial management practices and policies will be followed. And fifth, when, where there is a program to be expanded, those costs are to be shown separately. As per the instructions of the select board, the departments, rather than developing their budgets in department of silos, as we've done in years past, came together as divisions. So general government, public safety, public works, culture and recreation, human services. They came together as groups in terms of budget uh, instructions provided by the select board. And as a division, rather than as a department, uh, develop budget proposals, which you see in front of you today. Uh, just a note when looking through the budgets and going into some of the details, uh, in FY18, the current fiscal year budget, uh, we changed the chart of accounts in order to provide greater st uh, st uh, standardization and uh, 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 the ability to clean up a lot of clutter, clutter that had accumulated in the chart of accounts and, um, and provide fewer special rules and the better ability to make meaningful comparisons across department boundaries, such as comparing energy use between departments. That should be easier to affect now. It may be that some of the numbers, that you're tr if you're trying to compare them to last year's or pre prior years, some of the numbers may not match up. Where possible, I've tried to make that explicit in the budget presentation uh, and try to simplify things so that uh, it provides for a smooth uh, reading. Goals and objectives for FI19, these are the ones that either I developed or was developed in consultation with the select board. First goal is public safety. We made a commitment several years back to increase our, pres our ability to respond to public safety service needs. We hired new police officers. We provided for capital improvements for fire and police. And this current fiscal year, we had funded four full-time firefighters, a deputy chief, another lieutenant, and two full-time firefighters. So goal one would be to, uh, in FY19, is to uh, establishing sustainable funding for the enhanced public safety services uh, that we established in FY18. So keeping in four, four fire positions and keeping uh, sustainable funding. 
Goal two, public works. Okay, so Marlowe has done a lot of good work in the Department of Public Works, um, but where we need to focus our attention in FY19 are the enterprise funds, particularly having to do with water and sewer rates. Rates were increased for both enterprise funds back in 2018, but they need to be reviewed annually, and, and um, these sewer rates will promote water conservation, achieve service solvency, and support needed capital improvements. Goal three, building maintenance. Last year, or this current fiscal year, we consolidated a lot of diff different uh, line items into a single building maintenance budget under the control of the Department of Public Works. We increased that budget by uh, $20,000, as well as uh, providing $46,000 of transfers from other departments. Uh, this year, we're going to provide funding for a maintenance position, uh, which currently is on staff, but is funded by, through other means. So we'll be transferring some of that salary over to the building maintenance budget. Goal four, financial management. We do a good job of that, starting with OPEB. We're going to increase our OPEB contribution by 2.5% as per our plan to achieve a <coughs> sustainable funding of OPEB over the long term. Keeping in mind OPEB is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, so we, uh, we're, we're in it for the long game. Free cash, last year the select board in consultation with the Finance Committee to establish new policy governing free cash. We recognized that we were spending entirely too much free cash on recurring uh, <coughs> items within the budget and we wanted to scale that back over a period of years. We had a mixed result in FY18. We actually did better than I think we give ourselves credit for. Uh, we, had, um, we were able to uh, withhold from Keep our, we had to increase our spending of free cash on recurring rep, uh, items within the budget to $275,000, which was considerably higher than what our target was. But we were able to retain over $300,000 of free cash, which we then used for capital projects, paying cash instead of borrowing for some of the articles that we had originally thought we would have to borrow for cruisers and as such. Um, we were able to retain a small balance of $36,000 from that capital program for free cash. So this year, uh, since we uh, spent $275,000 in FY18, we would be looking at a target of $200,000, reducing it by $75,000 per year until we we're using no free cash for recurring revenues. I propose something a little bit more ambitious. So I'm proposing that we spend $125,000 of free cash on recurring items within the budget. Uh, that will provide you with $87,000 surplus at the end of the budget process to be used for other items such as capital, uh, union contract negotiation expenses, uh, 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 schools and ambulance and the other things that, were, that remain unfinished at this date. So finally that brings us to the stabilization fund. Um, we do have a stabilization fund which is in very healthy condition. It's above 12% of the uh, net operating uh, revenue. It exceeds both our percentage targets and our uh, total dollar targets. Our total do dollar targets are $2 million in the stabilization fund. But over the long term, as you look at the, uh, the performance of the stabilization fund as a percentage of the entire budget, it is steadily decreasing and there will be a time when we will begin to struggle to maintain our, our uh, goals of keeping a healthy stabilization account. So I'm recommending, I know this was unpopular in FY18, so it's bound to be unpopular in FY19, but I'm recommending a modest contribution to the stabilization fund. Okay. We'll hold on.
I'm just listening tonight, David, politely. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you covering me. All right, so there are open issues with this budget. We have ambulance services which need to be secured, and I know that we're going to be talking about proposals tonight. We have collective bargaining agreements. The negotiations have just started for three collective bargaining units. We have the non-union cost of living adjustments that need to be established. We have the management positions that we've been talking about in human resources, finance director, <coughs> IT director. Those <coughs> still need to come up with a plan for that. But I, just a quick interjection. Is the school department doing negotiations right now too, Ian? We concluded all of our all of our contracts have been settled. Settled for the next yeah. three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have. I should. I'm sorry. The the last unit will ratify, and school committee uh, is expected to vote at the next meeting. Okay. So, so it won't I be public until it won't be public until the school committee vote. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. But I anticipate by February that. So the Community Preservation Act we uh, fund, we started uh, using that more productively in FY18, and so if we can continue to use that for our many capital needs and historic buildings, uh, that will take pressure off the tax rate. The school budget, uh, I think the number, and correct me if I'm right here, the number that was presented is not the number that's been given to the school committee, or I don't know if there's been any number given to the school committee at this point, but that's still very much an open issue that we need to settle. So the, the information that, that we sent over to you, David, from the school department, a generally anticipated where we thought we were at, that has not been officially, they were, the school committee was copied on that email, mm -hmm. but the school committee won't uh, be discussing the budget in, in a lot of detail until their meeting this month. And that, as you indicated, there are a lot of variables still at play. Mm -hmm. And so the school budget that's in here is strictly level funded at the moment. Right now it's level funded, but as I said to Superintendent uh, McKenzie that uh, regardless of the number, the door is open. The, uh, the, the dialogue needs to happen. So our, uh, there, what you see doesn't represent any additional programming or additional positions and lesser were positions added in FY18 for students in the digital education program. The biggest factors for us that are at play is the 33% uh, reduction, reduction in the preschool grants and circuit breaker. Now they first were threatening a 10% reduction in reimbursement and now they're threatening to get rid of it all together. So in water and sewer rates, we touched upon that earlier in the talk, but uh, they definitely need to be uh, examined. And I know that Marlowe is working on a program that will show us the effect of operational, the cost of operation, cost of debt, cost of uh, ca future capital uh, uh, projects within the enterprise funds and what that means in terms of rate increase in order to maintain of service solvency and as well as fiscal solvency within the uh, enterprise fund. And then just as a concluding comment, uh, two things. First of all, when the divisions got together, and uh, I was talking about the, uh, the marching orders for the division rather than departments, uh, we talked about the need to find cuts within our operational budgets. We also talked about the need for enhanced revenue in order to close some of the target gaps that, uh, that uh, were, were presented to them. In terms of revenue and enhancing that revenue, people came up with a lot of ideas, but all of that needs to go through either town meeting or it needs to go through the select board. So I've not shown any revenue increases in my revenue chart. So you're going to hear a proposal today <coughs> to add to double the demand fee, which is allowed by law for delinquent taxes and other uh, charges through the collector's office, that alone would bring $30,000 to general government uh, fund. And, uh, but none of that money is shown, none of that increase is shown in the, the revenue. So every fee increase that you uh, allow um, 
that it increases your revenue and provides a little surplus there. Uh, and then finally, it was very helpful for the divisions, the departments to act as divisions. And so my recommendation is when we go forward evaluating the, the uh, budget proposals that we do this at the division level uh, rather than the department level. Uh, because I, I saw a lot of good synergy and a lot of, lot of good cross-communication between departments that I don't think normally occurs. And just um, just when you were going through the, the items that aren't in here, you know, like the, the ambulance being um, mm -hmm. a bit of a wild card, collective bargaining, et cetera. The other thing, too, is in looking at your expenses, you you made um, approximately $289,000 of adjustments, the bulk of it actually being bringing the school back to a level funded position. Mm -hmm. But as, as always, I'm sure that there will be some conversation with the departments who may be advocating for what was taken out, but there may be other things that come out to offset that too. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, before we get into it, I just um, want to thank the department heads in particular. That I know a couple of you are here tonight, but um, this, this was the first time going through and trying this approach, and it seems like it worked pretty well. So, uh, you know, people obviously were very engaged in the process and came up with a, a lot of good ideas. So, thank you for doing that, those of you who are here and those of you who are not. So. And thank you to David for... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, David. Oh, then there's David. David. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of putting this all together yeah. for us. We yeah. appreciate part of, it. Part of my job description. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, so um, just in terms of, I mean, we're not going to get through all of this tonight obviously because people are seeing it for the first time but I'm just wondering if it might be helpful David has a recap sheet in here and I know he, he talked through it but maybe to draw people's eyes to it which is just the summary David of the revenues mm -hmm. expenses what's coming from one-time free cash I'm looking at the one on page I think it's 19 this is available on the website yes it is if you go to the town administrators website it's there if you go to the board docs uh, for tonight, it's there as well. On 19. Yeah. Are you talking about the one that's on page 25? Well, I'm looking at the one on 19. It looks like it's titled The Brief Summary of the Budget. Or do, you, do you think there's oh, a better yes, one? Oh, yes, that one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This one is just where the free cash is going on the 20, page right. 25. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a total of seventeen million four eighty four of revenues, mm -hmm. and so what you said is that theoretically might, depending on votes and discussions, go up by another hundred and twenty five or one hundred fifty. Um, there is, yes, it's, it's easily we can get up to one hundred and twenty five thousand because you have eighty seven thousand of free cash projected for. Uh, the fall town, so that's not uh, allocated to anything, and you have a surplus of 36,000 of free cash that's already been certified, so you can easily achieve 125. But, but revenue would be ongoing revenue, right? Ongoing. I thought that's what we were talking about, right. like Sue's offering of doubling mm -hmm. the demand and all of that. Yeah. Okay. So and then expenses of 17951 so your starting point was a shortfall of 466000 And the proposal is that their free cash would be used for one-time expenses to the tune of 338000 And that's in accordance with the policy to fund reserve funds. So you're moving it from one balance sheet item effectively to another. So it's just from one bucket to another. It's not part of really operating. Right. And then 125000 would be used from free cash to balance the yes. operating budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the word on the cherry sheet? I mean, the first blush was terrible. I know the Senate uh, had it the other day. Has it, it changed at all? We got killed on our first, uh, first blush. For, we had a net loss of $112,000 from FY18 to FY19 uh, based upon what the governor put together. 
I've had a conversation with Representative Seibach who has assured us that they can do better. So the, in terms of general governmental aid, in terms of Chapter 78, uh, they, can, uh, they can certainly do better. Uh, I think it's time during this election year, and everybody is up for election, so now is a good time to get more money on the table. Uh, that if we uh, get the legislature to fully fund the charter school tuition reimbursement, that would that would bring another hundred thousand dollars into the town if they simply <coughs> did what they're legally re required to do. So, what numbers have we used on this in preparing? We've budget? used we've used the governor's numbers. Okay. So we're hoping for a little better then. Hoping for a lot better. Okay. Any other comments or questions for David from the select board? No? Forge ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And finance committee and, and superintendent are here as well. Great job, David. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so then, then I guess, in, well, and, and Annie had just said that the school committee is going to be dealing with this at their meeting at the at next week? Oh, two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks, sorry. Okay. So then more to come from you in March, probably? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then how do we want to proceed then in terms of moving forward from a process standpoint with, you know, it sounded, the last I left off, I recall that the Finance Committee, I think, was advocating for having separate conversations with the divisions? Or were we going to do it? And I'm, I'm sorry, there's just been a lot going on today. I think we were looking at separate at one point, but then we never um, had a, anything firm. We were, it's, up, it's still up in the air. I mean, another thing we can do is we can have the divisions come in front of the select board on a scheduled basis as we have in the past have the finance committee present and then to the extent you feel that it's you know necessary to have a separate meeting mm -hmm. you could always request one too I, I mean I so we have we have one in in this book already that everybody has put together mm -hmm. so everybody has already done their homework mm -hmm. put together what they wanted within their groups of safety DPW so on and so forth so what, what else are we going to discuss except we're waiting for the issues on where our money is coming from and, uh, you know, you can take your best shot at it now, but until mm -hmm. we get closer to actuality, there's not much you can decipher. So what would be the purpose of having more conversation with these groups when you've already done this part of it? Well, it's ultimately your budget. Right. So, uh, so, I mean, sure so we're going on this right now without right. any changes. So. Uh, what are we going to ask there, these other groups for? There, there are places where I uh, have made some changes to the re requested budget. Okay, so let's take 490, for example. Um, there's an item in there for $20,000 for senior center exterior repairs. If we're truly demolishing the senior center in the next 18 months, I thought that that was excessive, and so I trimmed that budget by $10,000. Mr. Marlowe has come to me and said, you can't possibly cut me that much. Um, I need at least some of that money back. So you have to give them the opportunity to um, plead their case and make a cogent argument as to why they need that additional money that I haven't provided for them. And, and what I'm thinking is that if, if in fact we may decide to run with some higher revenue figures, depending on some of these warrant discussions that we're talking about and and if in fact some of that is put back into the budget then we, we may want to have some discussion about af after we have a better understanding across the organization of where some of these cuts have been made kind of prioritize where we might want those monies to be applied um, plus I think it gives the department heads an opportunity to have the face time with the, with the select board because there may be other other things that aren't in the budget that set the stage for subsequent years? There are some nifty ideas that uh, I heard when talking to the divisions, and uh, I think that 
you know, you should you should hear that from your department heads. So it's a lot of good thinking going on, a lot of hard work, and trying to put things together in a different way uh, that uh, I think are, are worth knowing. So is that their anticipation that they had wanted to do this? <coughs> I'm sorry. Is that their anticipation that they were going to come before us? Is that how it was perceived? Yeah, I, I, th I think that I think that they need to come before you and, and present their information, and uh, there may be other ways that we can put this together than the way that we've, we've done. Um, keep in mind that we, the, the department heads, were acting as divisions, did a remarkably responsible job of putting together the budgets, but they had a very short time frame to do that. And there may be additional thinking that's gone along. That uh, that you may want to know about. Well, then wouldn't it be a better idea that if we all did it together instead of trying to do separate meetings that's with right. everything? That's what I'm saying. At I mean, least we I, start. I there. can't see where you'd have to do two or three different meetings. Yeah. You know, I think we, we got to hear it. You got to hear it. So we might as well hear it at the same time, mm -hmm. right? And then that would probably be okay. I mean, we like um, the one year we did separate. Last year we did it. You did it. We listened in. Um, we could probably figure out something that maybe we can just well, do. We can it always on. have separate discussions and then mm -hmm. you know collaborate after that. Also, if we yeah. choose to. Yeah, I think that was the key because we wanted to make sure that when we brought departments in and that both committees were speaking to them, if there's something we disagreed on, we didn't want to be hashing that out in front of department heads. Yeah, right. that's why you should stay independent. In my in my my opinion, if you well, if you guys got questions. That you may take a little bit longer than we do, or we would have other questions that may take a little longer than you would, you know. I mean, but I'd still like to know their questions. I mean, if they have questions that we should be aware of, then we're getting their minutes to their meeting all the time, and they're getting ours. But I, but I think that it doesn't hurt if we're bringing in one group at a time to listen to the same things, and as I said, go back and rehash things amongst yourselves, <laughs> and we can do the same thing. and. In the effort to discuss efficiency, I, I would advocate the way we used to be done, where the finance committee took care of initial <coughs> uh, discussions after this was done here. Whatever can get put to bed where everybody agrees on these things, and then things that are not agreed upon are the things that we concentrate on, is what I would rather do. Amongst the individual department heads, the finance committee, and the select board, to come to some kind of ratification. If we have um, 10 departments which are just completely no uh, easily adjustable and it doesn't take everybody's time up so much time there and we have 10 that we need to concentrate on so let the finance committee do the interviews as used to be done okay they take care of that everybody agrees everybody works within the budget that's fine that's done it gets put over here the three or four hopefully that need to be addressed and um, looked at go over here and we all sit together and kumbaya <laughs> That's my idea. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, yeah. I, I have no problem with finance. Me neither. Over, so. Oh, I don't have a problem with it either. I was just trying to make it easier for him. That's all. But I, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm it got so easy the last town meeting that we proposed a budget and they proposed a budget and it didn't work, did it? Because that doesn't make any sense. So difference. let them do what they have to do I first. I can still have my own thoughts on it, John. <coughs> you have so your thoughts. I'm just asking mine. to, for clarity, though, are. And, and I'm fine either way, you know, whatever, whatever works. But are, are we asking, are we asking the department heads to come in front of both groups, or are you saying have the department heads meet with the finance committee, yeah. and then only where there's an issue have them come from the select board? Yes, that's what you're, that's what you're. That's what I would like. That's what, okay. I just want to make sure that that's understood. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would Can, like it independently, but I'll go along with that. Yeah. Well, and I. No, that is independent. So we're saying that the department heads would actually meet with the finance committee, not us, unless there's a compelling issue. But a compelling issue meaning a disagreement, I guess. But the other thing I want to offer is the opportunity for department heads who may want to bring something in from the select board Absolutely. to be able to do that. I, don't, I just don't want to yeah. carve them out of the communication process. Absolutely. But not mandate it. No. Is that fair? Yep, fair. Good with you. Okay. Yeah, I don't care. Okay. So this is something good. The one point I'd like for some clarity, though, is so obviously one of our priorities, the big priority, is the override. But we still have the needs of HR, IT, and finance. 
is it a priority to select or to try and carve out any money for that from this budget for this fiscal year in the event the override doesn't go through? Because that's where I can see that a lot of the, the 10 no-brainer departments or whatnot we might go back and take another look at if we are trying to find the money for some of those things. So that's just the wrench I can see that could get thrown into this. Um, whatever wrench. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was another point to bring up. Yeah. Also missed the last meeting. So. I think we have some stuff to discuss. See, th this yeah. is where we need to discuss this stuff again. And again. And again. Because some people just don't get it. No, but I mean, right right now, this budget is not, there's no override in this budget. Right. That's what, what I'm saying. So we, we still have the identified needs, IT and yes. our finance. So override aside, is there any will right now from the select board to try and get some preliminary IT or some form of any of those needs into this budget? Because that would require a little more cutting or trimming, which would kind of throw a wrench in the whole, you know, the, the straightforward departments might just come from the finance committee and the more complex departments might come from the select board. Because we have to take another look at those straightforward departments if we're trying to find some more fat to trim for. IGHR finance. Yeah, I still think we have our feelers out there to see what else is available without going for overrides mm -hmm. too on some of these things um, yeah. with the IT and the HR. So I mean, you know, that's why we're like, okay, override. Well, hopefully we can maybe not have to do an override because I don't think it would be well received right now at this point is what I'm getting from the community. And I guess the way that I guess the way that I'd look at it is if in the course of the review you come across something that makes you think, you know what, in the back of your mind, human resources, information technology, finance director, maybe we, we really ought to be thinking about this service or how we're delivering that service to free up some money. I mean, I'd, I'd be very open-minded to hearing about that. Um, I would be absolutely shocked if there's any fat in this budget. Um, so, so I don't think we're going to find any of that. I think, again, we're talking about restructuring of some kind. And maybe <laughs> maybe in the course of your conversations, though, some of that, again, might come out. Like David said, some of the department heads may have had some ideas that didn't make its way here. But if you think that there's merit to some of that, and you're like, wait a minute, if we actually did that now, we could free up. Because we're, you know, when we're talking about these functions, we're not talking $5,000, we're talking you know, 50,000 and up per function. So, and then that would be wonderful if we could find room to then, you know, move forward with some of the IT discussion we had. I don't think the human resources group ever uh, met. So I don't think we're, we're going anywhere with that at the moment. <coughs> Have you made it to any of the Hampshire County meetings? Yeah. Have there been any? Words of wisdom from them on HR or IT? I think you need some opportunities. Yes. Um, With no, no discussion at this point? Right now, so there have been a few letters, and Mr. Ford's exploring a couple options with, I think I explained before, with, uh, working with Connecticut and kind of plugging into their system and the HR letter support that we all, or you guys have signed, support of the one of the regional programs. Um, frankly, they're all holding their breath right now, trying to work with state legislators to try and solve their financial situation. Two of them, they're losing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Retiring. Mm -hmm. And um, and after that, we're going to take another hard look at regional services, because I'm still a proponent that regional services should really be the heart of that organization, yeah. and try and find a way to make it a money maker. But exactly. next, that's really working with state legislators. Survival. Survival. And I think I was listening to the fact that we had this conversation, I don't know if it was at the last tribe board or the one before, that it's already been reviewed and that there's no fat in the budget. And that's what you were kind of indicating to us, that if these were things were going to be funded, it was going to have to be on an override. So that's the way I'm looking at this budget that we have in front of us. I don't think you're going to find three positions worth of fat in here to be able to chop out of there. And I don't notice it's fair to our department heads to ask to look for that at this point in time. So let's, it, it's my opinion, if you guys sit down and you go over with a fine tooth comb and understand increases, decreases, opportunities for savings, opportunities for different departments to cross use and figure that out like we did with the maintenance department, that's great. Maybe there's some opportunities there. If not, um, 
certainly understanding the plight of the departments and what they're looking for for monies, needs, and future aspects of what they're looking for. Let's understand that going. You guys mm -hmm. sit and work that out to the best of your abilities as to it, what everybody can do. Whatever can't be worked out or whatever there's, there seems to be some question about, we'll all sit and talk about it and see what we can do to come up with, with savings or, or then we'll talk about overrides as to what, mm -hmm. what the actual number should look like at that point in time. I think that makes sense. I think we're on the same page. It's mostly like trying to get a feeler out for how you're prioritizing those things because yeah. there's still a little wiggle room and just off the top of my head, but with the free cash amount, if we want to be a little less kind of progressive with that and go back to the 225, that would free up for an additional position, right. for example. Or if the cherry sheet comes back a little more favorable in the coming weeks or in the coming month, mm -hmm. might open up some cash to explore the finance each. HRNIT. And that's, that's I think, where we, we would yeah. absolutely prioritize. Okay. But then we that. still have ambulance collective bargaining. Yeah. This is the end of the school. Yeah. So, when there's already a, there's already a number in there for the budget for the ambulance that we have now, so it's just a matter of what, the, what else we might have to add to that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so everybody comfortable with this? How we're going? So I guess the next, <coughs> next step then is really for, for you guys to start scheduling those mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. The three of the department heads for the time. Four. Sorry. Sorry, Patrick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five. And. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's right. And yeah, I forgot the schools going there, too. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So we okay with the budget to move on to the warrant? Okay. I am. Unless yeah. do you have any questions? No, nope, I didn't. It's going to take a while to look through it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you have copies of the warrants available. I've sent it to you electronically. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. And the table, so if people want to grab this up. Thank you. Yeah. Do, you do you have one of these hands? <laughs> Mike, do you want to snap one for Annie in the back? Yeah. Can we give one to Valerie? Yeah. No, Finance okay. committee. Um, one of you guys give me. I got one. Yours up to. Uh, are you going to share? Okay. <laughs> okay. No, they're all set. Oh yeah. Yeah, All right, so four o'clock today will be a deadline uh, passed, uh, and by the time it passed, we had 31 uh, articles or reservations for articles. Uh, this sounds like a large number, but a lot of these can be reduced or combined. We have eight of those articles that can go on the consent agenda if you look at the title page. I've got this all mapped out for us. So just going through the first three, these are the standard ones that we have at every annual town meeting. Grants Chapter 90 and short-term borrowing. Article 4 is for fund balances, and this is where we go through our list of capital projects and we return to the original pot of money, any surplus that's being left in that, those articles and that are unproductive. Uh, we've had three requests for uh, revolving funds that uh, uh, would require an infusion of cash of about $6,000. Uh, article 6 is the budget adjustment. It says FY18. It should say FY19. Oh, excuse me. Article 6 is FY18 budget adjustment. This is a this is a reallocation of money between debt and interest in order to uh, 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 pay down more principal and pay less in the way of interest. <laughs> this is in our, our, to our advantage. It could be on the consent agenda. Article 7 is the FY19 omnibus budget, and that's obviously what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of months. Article 8 is the uh, Water filtration uh, plant filters. We put twenty-six thousand dollars away every year until we've achieved uh, ten years of savings, and then we use that to replace the membranes on the ultra filtration plant down at uh, Bay Road. Sorry. 
like it up and dance. That's how we went from 10 to 20. 26 is the actual figure now. Yes, the, the second we set down, that, that was the projected 20, okay. 260,000 for the 10 year. Okay. Aren't these a better membrane that have a little longe better longevity or no? They're all forecasted for 10 years. Okay. Um, all right. 10 years it goes up. Yeah. 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 Article at nine is the capital uh, uh, plan for the spring. It consists currently of three items: with the additional funding for the fire substation, that's about eight hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. And that number is good now, Chief. That's Pretty the most accurate. recent number I got from Phil. Okay. Um, we have $5,000 to redesign the town website to make it much more uh, uh, interactive for the departments. And then we have a uh, $13,000 item for to replace the uh, school warning lights on Route 9, uh, one of which is collapsed and the other one is not long for this world. So that's for one. That's for two. Um, I'm waiting on some more quotes. Um, we're right around that figure for solar power. We'll no longer pay it for electricity for what happens. Articles 10 and 11 possibly be, be combined, but they would just. I was asking if the state was responsible for those lights. No. No. no such we, ha we have to pull the appropriate permits with the state, but they're our responsibility. They're originally. How, how far back were those installed originally? For that, I couldn't find. I couldn't find how far back, but those have been around a long time. Uh, I think the history of the one up here was when it was an elementary school further up here. So I don't know how many years ago that was, but that one should come down this way a little closer to Hopkins when it gets done. The new one. I don't know if they've been up. Have they been up since Russell School, Booker School yet? As long as I can remember. Yeah, I don't think any of us know how, yeah. how ancient those things are, but they're ancient enough that one of them fell over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. Articles 10 and 11, they may be able to be combined. This is an idea that I've uh, been exploring with uh, the superintendent about setting up a stabilization account that would be controlled by the school committee in order to prevent wild mid-year swings in their in their expenses. Uh, Article 12, demand fees, and this is something that Ms. Kulowatsky is going to come tonight to talk a little bit about, but it's a proposal to double the demand fees for delinquent taxpayers uh, who owe money to the uh, collector's office. Right now, the, uh, the uh, Demand fee is fifteen dollars. The state allows us to do thirty dollars. That would increase our revenue by about thirty thousand dollars if we did that. But this requires a town meeting vote. Now, number thirteen, marijuana sales tax. We have already adopted this at two percent. The law changed, and we're now allowed to have three percent. So I'm going to go for the additional percentage point on that. 14, this is something that we may be able to combine into Article 1. This is a gift from the Friends of Council on Aging uh, for uh, various programs at the, uh, at the Senior Center. 15, this is something that we've talked about and the, the, the assessors support. It's a real estate exemption for elderly people in the town of Hadley. Uh, 16 is on your consent agenda. It's administrative fees for the CPA committee. And then the CPA committee has received two requests for funding, and they're sorting through that. We should hear in a month whether they can come forward. Article 18 is the appointment of the treasurer and collector. They're currently elected positions right here. This is something that the select board has asked me to put on the agenda. I didn't ask you to put it on there. I think you all did. And I didn't ask you to put it on there. You guys, you guys no, all. I did with your permission, if you remember. Right? Remember that meeting? I do. Thank you. 
Article 19, the police department have asked for a re revision of our animal control bylaw. Article 20, this is a mosquito control district article. This was something that Charlie Kaneki came in front of you and uh, asked for a commitment to support the mosquito control district. Uh, this needs to be researched. Uh, the police department has asked for a nuisance bylaw. This is actually something through the police department presented to me on behalf of the fire department and the building inspector, but this would help take care of some of the uh, uh, structural uh, issues that we have in town. Number 22 Specifically is the graffiti and the falling graffiti down. Graffiti and falling down structures, etc. 22 is stormwater bylaw. We had a grant to revise all of our bylaws having to do with stormwater. This is under uh, review by planning board as well. Planning board has asked for four reserved spots, so that's Articles 24 through 27. Article 28 is a petitioned article to change the way that we hold our annual elections, or more accurately, how we count the votes for our annual elections. It's a uh, form of instant runoff balloting. Two articles are petition to either move the senior center from the proposed location on the Hooker School lot to the recently acquired lot up at the intersection of Stockbridge Road and River Drive. Um, the second petition is to rescind the senior center funding altogether. Uh, and then the final article is a petition to rescind the recreational marijuana moratorium. This petition did not achieve the required number of signatures to have it placed on the ballot on the warrant. It requires 10 and received five. So if you decide that you don't want to see it there, you can remove it. If you support it, you can keep it there. It didn't get the signatures? It got five signatures. That it got 10 signatures, but only five of them were registered Hadley voters. You need 10 registered then, then Hadley voters. I, I have no appetite to listen to that. I don't either. Take it Should off. Be a long way that it is. I make a motion. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. No, you're done? Yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Well, do you the want to discuss it? State's dragging our feet. We're dragging our feet. And the people have voted in Massachusetts. Yeah, with this, we're still waiting on the federal government. Yeah. So there's a bunch of slam dunks in here. If you guys want to take votes to support, um, the, the consent agenda items are pretty straightforward. You can uh, make some progress tonight if you wish, or you can defer that. Folks want to do that tonight, or do you want to hold and do it at a future meeting? I don't care. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Pretty straightforward. I got a couple of questions. Not on the consent agenda, or on the consent agenda? Uh, These are the consent agenda ones that mark there. James, what are you Okay. Um, as a town meeting participant, I am often confused because you take articles not in succession, is there any way to change the numbering of these articles so all the consent agenda articles are in a row? In a row. Can it's, we do that? Absolutely, you can do that. Yeah. I think that's a very reasonable suggestion. Um, does anybody have a problem with ordering no, those all the consent? Yeah, it makes good sense. You, can you do that? Absolutely, you can okay. do that. Um, you don't need motion to take a vote to do that. Down the table. Has it been seconded? No. Second. No. no Do you have any question on the consent items, or we no, okay No, consent's all set. Okay. All right. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. 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 And it's the finance committee in a similar position that the consent agenda could be approved. These are articles that you see every single year. You're missing a member. I don't know. Yeah. It matters to them at all. 
Well, I, I think you can just probably do it next time. I mean, okay. we'll go through them next time. That way, just just because it's the first time looking at it, let Terry take a quick peek. Yeah, always trying to move the football. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else then for our tribe board this evening? If you would uh, take a vote to close the warrant, that would be fine. Can I ask a question? Is that sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, just a couple of questions that the school committee had at the last meeting on the recommended school stabilization. Is that, would that be, where would that money come from? The, this all has to be worked <laughs> out, but we talked about taking a sum from the general stabilization account transfer it over to a newly created school stabilization account and then we have to appropriate money uh, so that it can be used uh, as needed so there's two steps that need to happen we have to tr make the transfer because that's all you can do from one stabilization account to the other and then you have to do an appropriation thank you sure Well, we, haven't, we haven't talked about it. You haven't yet. talked to yeah, Hubbard. I'm, yeah. already, I'm already thinking out loud here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I've been disconnected the last couple of weeks, so forgive me if Finance Committee already went over this. So if we were to go for an override for mm -hmm. some finance ITHR, would that be a part of Article 7? Would that have to be a separate item that we could find a warrant now, or could we be made on, on the floor just logistically trying to figure it out? In general, the. Um, it depends on what you want the override for, but let's say it's for operational purposes, then it would be uh, built into Article 7, and we would do that as part of the motion for Article 7. Why wouldn't you do it separate? Why wouldn't you vote on the budget and then ask for the override? So that if it doesn't pass on the, yeah. in, in the ballot that you're not. You have a number of different ways of doing it, and without knowing the particulars of what's being suggested, it, it would you could do it separately. But I would uh, I would say build it into your omnibus budget as best as you possibly can. So if it doesn't pass at the ballot, doesn't that does that necessitate an additional meeting? You you could set it up that way. I wouldn't. Uh, I would set it up so that it's a contingency. So you s you pass a budget that you know you can afford. Yeah. You add to that budget the amount of the override, if the f uh, and then put in language that says, if the voters approve, then the budget is this much higher. But if they don't approve, then you're going to go with your original budget proposal. I agree with Jerry. Go for the budget for now and then whatever we want. Or if we can just in a future meeting yeah. discuss the pros and cons of either yeah. way. Yep. My, yeah. my gut feeling is right now that, that, that it's a lot cleaner and simpler if we do it separately. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not so confusing. Well, it doesn't you know, draw you back into a problem right. of having a, yeah. a problem budget. with the budget that you just got done passing. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but I'm glad there's options available. There are many options available. Yeah. Just want to make sure that it'll get on the warrant in some fashion. Because we want to talk So our drop dead deadline for that would be April twenty fifth. We have to post on the twenty sixth. Okay. So gotcha. um, we would have to have all that language vetted by the, by council by the twenty fifth and ready for signature. So any other, did you say you had a couple of questions? Apparently, I just was making it stories to get attention. I actually only <laughs> have one. Oh. <laughs> the next time you come. You had our attention. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so important for a moment. That's it, just one. Thank you. OK, so <clears throat> are we all set then with the tri-board portion of the meeting? No, I got a question. I got a couple questions mm -hmm. here on this one. That the uh, finance committee might be interested in the uh, stormwater gap that they, the state has implemented on this. Where are they with the lawsuit with the towns that are uh, going against this MS4 rate? Yeah, How many so towns are there? So I, I don't have a figure for the number of towns, but there's a num there's a lot of confusion over the stormwater 
uh, requirements. As you remember, the EPA issues the stormwater permit, the MS-4. Um, Mr. Trump's administration has put the federal enforcement of MS-4 on hold for one year. That year is going to be up in June 2018. Whether they continue that uh, hold or not, I don't know. I've seen no information. But the Massachusetts Department of Public uh, of uh, Massachusetts Department of uh, Environmental <coughs> Protection co-administers this MS4 uh, program, and they say <coughs> they are not they are not going to enforce it, but they're not going to relinquish control or the requirements that the town have to adhere to. By. So that's created a certain amount of confusion as to what we need to be doing. So the federal government doesn't fund it, the state doesn't fund it, and they're not really going to apply most of these rules and regulations to the towns at this point. Because they've got active lawsuits against them already. Well, here, here the, the couple, couple of uh, things. First of all, what is it about MS4 permit that we actually do like? What is best management practices that we haven't been doing but we Can should Can I interject do? here just yeah. one quick second to make sure everybody's on the same page? Are you saying we should take 22 off of here because it's not a... Yeah. Because I think 22 is not whether or not we're going to be... Th this is about illicit connections and disconnects yes. to the storm drain yes. sewer system. Yeah, it's the whole... It's the Why is this whole, on there? It's the whole thing. Two things. Is it because two, of MS4? Two or? Yeah, two reasons. First of all, is it best management practices? Yes, it is. Okay. Two is that somebody may be pulling a trigger on, on MS4 at any time, that, and we may have a very short horizon in which to comply with the requirements. If we have the opportunity to move the football in a planned and orderly way now, we should take that opportunity and move it forward. This doesn't cost you anything to do. What's it going to cost us? MS4 will cost you operationally and capital-wise. How but much? This particular thing will not uh, will not cost you. Uh, I don't have that figure up. We had it uh, though. It was five hundred eighty thousand. No, that's three, what we appropriate. Three hundred ninety thousand for the first five years of the project. That's what we appropriate for the first five years of the project. What is this going to cost us? <coughs> Implementing number twenty-two. Yes. Nothing. So the other thing to think about is that MS4 is driven by what happens in Long Island Sound. And as you know, that there is that dead zone where the mouth of the Connecticut River empties into the, uh, uh, into the Long Island Sound. And that dead zone is rather large, and it has no sustainable marine life in it at all. Apparently, all sorts of nasty things are happening down there. Um, that's not going to go. in Jersey like everything else. <laughs> That's not going to go away. The Gulf Stream is I think, it. I think an important piece of it is there, there's been no information whatsoever that it's going to go beyond the exactly the one year uh, suspension of this thing. Um, it's going to, I'm being told it's going to take an effect July 1. We're still going to have to have it, our NOI in by September 29th, I think it is. Um, and part of Part of one year one going into year two was rewriting the stormwater bylaws, which was PVPC working with us, which were were in collaboration with them. So, so the people that are against this, what are they doing? Are they actually passing their bylaws in their towns? I, I haven't heard any information on, on on the law. You know, as far as the communities in the lawsuit or anything, John. I haven't heard anything recent. So the, the bylaw review is handled through a, a grant through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So again, the, the whole review and the study process, thinking about how, it, how it do, our existing bylaws do or do not comply with the new requirements, all of that was funded by a grant. That grant had three other towns involved. I want to say Williamsburg is one of them, uh, and I can't remember the other two. I don't know what uh, those towns are doing in terms of preparing a warrant for their annual town meeting for compliance. You know, uh, I think I think what we need to do is we need to be aware that Long Island Sound's not going to clear itself up on its own. We may 
be living in an anti-regulatory environment right now, but one of these days, someone's going to say, you need to jump through these particular hoops. If we can do this now, best management practices in such a way that it's not costing you money now, and it's avoiding headaches and panic and scramble later on, I say that we do it. So well, we'll have opportunity to have further discussion on this, yep. right? Yep. Did you say, did you have another one, John? Uh, yeah, let me see here. Do you have a list of those towns? I'll have to get it. Right. To it? Yeah, I'll Can you get to. it for me? Yeah. I'll call them myself then. I just think that's going to open us up to a, a big finan financial issue down the road. And, you know, I, I just, the whole mandate seemed to be way out of control originally when it first came out, too. And then when I seen some of the, there's a few bigger cities involved and in opposing to this thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we're just following the little line in the sand. The state, the state has, has met us on Route 9 right down the middle. They've been great to us, you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're going to be great to us, you know, for the next section of their construction job, which <coughs> we're probably going to fight her tooth and nail all the way through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, if the state's not, not going to take responsibility for some of this stuff in the feds, then I don't, I just don't see them dumping any more cost out to the taxpayers mm -hmm. at this point right now. I'm with you this if it was that if it was that bad DEP would be down our throats right now already and saying clean this up clean this up clean this up mm -hmm. I think it's they've been the doing time. it with fuel tanks they've been doing it with heating oil tanks right down the line mm -hmm. I think this is just over regulation okay anything else okay. for the tri-board meeting I'll make a motion to close the warrant make a motion to close the warrant is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, warrant closed. All right, and uh, I guess that concludes the tri board meeting. So we are going to roll into our normal uh, select board business. So, first, uh, on this evening, we have the consent agenda. We have approval of minutes from November 15th and December 6th meetings. We have many. Uh, payroll and counts payable warrants that are too numerous to uh, read off here. The class two auto dealer license for ZG Motors um, and the proprietor there is Armani George. The common VIC license for Genji LLC. Another common VIC license for Hadley Broad LLC doing business as Sweet Broad. We have the uh, a DPW appointment because it's the end of the probationary period. That would be for Daniel Kelly. We have DPW permit and fee updates, um, a driveway permit and excavation trench permit, a DPW surplus property, uh, surplus vehicles to be listed on Municipid, and uh, we have a, a list attached. A one day liquor license request from Western Mass Climbers Coalition for Central Rock Gym on February 10th. Another uh, one day license for uh, the Food Bank of Western Mass the Maple and Mimosas North Hadley Sugar Shack on March 3rd, and a one-day liquor license for the top of the campus, uh, the Kevin Hart Comedy Show at the Mullins Center to be held on March 9th. And then we have administrative fees update um, for the Hadley Conservation Commission and their permit filings. And if we could uh, remove that last one because it asked for additional time. Okay. So move down the um, consent agenda. And is there any, uh, just to make sure that the, on the local licenses, they've been cleared by the? Second for discussion. Police of chief, chief of police <laughs> and of fire chief. Okay, second for discussion. So, so 
So the only thing about the, uh, the uh, top of the campus uh, uh, one day liquor license is that that needs to be inspected prior to the event. Fire department. Okay. Yeah. Same with the, the rock climbing thing is just we just want to make sure that they maintain their occupancy limit on that mezzanine yeah. level. That's why I wanted to ask if that's yes. not been cleared by you or not. And it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. ZG Motors, that's not an error. Does, does he need to clear anything? Mike, do you need to clear anything on that rock climbing wine is thing? Or Okay, just want to be sure. Okay. And then uh, John has a question on the location of ZG Motors. I think Mr. George is here. He can uh, you're talking about uh, Z Motors. <coughs> that's next to the, uh, the Chinese restaurant at the end of Amherst. Yeah. I'm at 249 Russell Street. It's right next to the Hasty Fence. Next to what? Hasty Fence. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Where the campers are first. Yeah. In the driveway, yeah. Hasty fence. 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 Hasty Except for the Hadley Council. Yes. Election. No. Uh, DPW. DPW. Then you're abstaining. Abstaining, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, we do have time. Is anyone here this evening for public comment? Excellent. The Municipal Buildings Committee had asked me to, what would it be appropriate at this time talking about that? Uh, they asked me uh, if they could. Uh, again, talked a little bit about North Hadley Hall, and I know we had <coughs> some discussion at the symposium that we had uh, as to a lot of different things need to be addressed. They thought if everybody, um, who they, they'd like an agenda item set up for it for, to have a meeting regarding that, and if anybody who had a, um, an issue, uh, conservation, I mean, um, historical society, anybody um, that had any issues regarding that, if we could sit and talk about it. And if we could get written down what the questions are that need to be addressed, like uh, whether or not we can park on the field there or whether or not that's been addressed, we haven't heard anything back regarding any of that, those questions that we had talked about. Are you talking about at a select board meeting? Yeah, uh, it's the, I would just assume do it as a select board meeting. We'll set it up for a first time, first thing, and we'll bring the committees in, whoever needs to discuss this. I know okay. planning board has uh, uh, an idea as to what they think should go there, but there's other opportunities so that we can get this bid put together and get it out. Okay, I've got that done. Got that done. All right. So we'll we'll try to slide that onto an upcoming agenda. Excellent. And David, if you could get back to the municipal buildings committee and let them know it's discussed. Thank you, sir. Okay. So anything else during the open comment period or public comment period? Okay, if not, then we will roll forward to um, fees. fees. So, <laughs> okay, so for fees, um, we've got two, I think two or three discussions here. We have the demand fees that we were talking about at our tri board meeting, and I see Sugowatsky, our tax collector, is here to discuss that. Do you want to start there? Yep. Two? Okay. I just wanted to touch base with you folks and get your feedback on this because back in 2009 when the legislation was proposed, um, we went from a $5 demand fee to a $15 demand fee, which I felt was appropriate. Um, <coughs> the way the legislation was written was whatever demand fee you chose to do was across the board. So on a $5 motor vehicle or a $5,000 real estate, it, it's required to be the same. So um, when David came to us and said, we need to look at, uh, for the 100 series budgeting, general government budgeting, we need to find $30,000 in new revenues or we need to cut something from general government. Um, I said, well, 
Uh, last year, I collected $29,864 in demand fees. At 15. Um, at 15. So we can pretty much do that in one fell swoop. However, your neighbor or your relative or yours or yours or yours, uh, when they get a $30 demand fee on a $5 motor vehicle trailer excise, we'll call you first. Yeah. Or me. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm late. I know. I'm late. Well, I'm late once How in a while. How much do you pay? But, I'm late once in a while. So you're going to take phone calls on this as well. Um, I, you know, I have um, corresponded with our state reps and our senators and my association to ask that the legislation uh, be re rewritten to allow towns to do different demand fees for different types of yeah, tax. Sort of de minimis, anything below. Exactly. Okay. Um, and nothing has happened with that. So you just need to be aware if, if town meeting, and I, I would say probably most of the people who attend town meeting are very timely on their tax bills. It's just why can't we do that? The other 3,300 or so that. Why that, can't we do that now? Up to $1,000 one. We can't. It, it's not, it, the legislation doesn't allow us to. We nothing. have to adopt an all or nothing. So, so it's, that's that is my thirty-three uh, incidents, and yeah. and by far the most numerous number of of demands that I send out are for motor vehicles. Yeah, sure. Because they're small dollar amounts. A exactly. Lot of times. Yeah. And you know they're just forgotten, and I get that, but. Um, did you collect any? I'm sorry. What? Did you collect any quicker when it was 15 versus five? Um, is there an advantage? There to was. Community? There was. There is that kind of double-edged sword there because when it went to 15, people seemed to become more timely in their payments, and you know I I don't think it's a matter where we, you know, we make a differential as far as bad behavior you know yes we would like taxes paid timely but um we did see a decrease in demand fee collections when we went to 15. and we may very likely see that in 2020 if we go to 30. i know a 30 dollar hit would open my eyes a lot more than a 15 dollar well i mean when you think about just in banking and again, not that this has ever happened to anybody in the room, but if you, <laughs> you know, if you overdraft your account, yeah. I mean, it Those used to be have increased five, substantially. Like, Thirty-eight dollars or something like mm -hmm. that now for an overdraft fee. And again, the bank doesn't care if it was a thousand-dollar withdrawal or if it was a five-dollar withdrawal. You still get hit the thirty-eight dollars. Right. So, so I just want. I think to people are used to it. I guess is my point. I hate to say that. I know, but um, I think the four of you will get phone calls mm -hmm. just as quick as I will. Yep. So did we put it on the head, head, heads up on that? Last time, when we went from five to fifteen, it had to be. It yes, to be. it has to be a town meeting vote, and everybody just kind of went like, "Yep." When did we do that? Two thousand nine. Does it go on the uh, tax bill that if you're late, there will be a $30 fee? Can no. You, can you put that on the tax bill so people will read it? Uh, no, because it has to be approved by DOR, and DOR recommends, or DOR approves the tax form bill, but not, they will not approve each individual uh, towns. Because there are some towns that still charge a $5 demand. They never increased it in 09. And then there are towns like South Hadley that immediately went to $30 in 09. So if you had to guess as a rule, what do most communities do? Uh, they, they took the middle of the line option like we did. 
Um, so. All right, so do you want us to vote on that? It's on the agenda. I don't it's know that you... More. Well, it, yeah, it's going to be on the agenda. I just wanted to make the folks aware. Oh, okay. All right, and, so we don't need And I wanted to make sure yeah. everybody's on board. When it comes yeah, I don't know if she if we needed it. You know, to do anything now, right? I just wanted to make sure everybody's on board with going to the 30. Right, um, you don't want I'm, to be standing up on town meeting floor and then the select board all votes no. I mean, that would be Well, no, I don't want the select board to go, what the hell is she doing? Right. You know? <laughs> because uh, she just kept us informed. Right. So we'll, when we discuss the Warren article, then we'll take it up then. But We're informed so. and I'm against it, so. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> and John, you should be. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then we also have um, Marlo has a DPW excavation trench permit that you're proposing. You want to explain that? Down in the trenches. Yes, in 422, we have um, we actually have three permits that, that Thank I'm you, requesting Sue. for adjustment on fees. Um, the last time they were looked at or adjusted was 2008 and before. Um, what I've done with the, uh, the, the public way and trench permit used to be two separate forms. I've combined it. It's a lot of the same information, so I've combined it to one form with two uh, fee schedules on the form that can be checked off when the application is made out. Um, the the open public way was was twenty five dollars, um, and I'm proposing to to move it to sixty dollars uh, per permit. The trench permit uh, is thirty dollars, and I'm proposing to move to eighty dollars. Um, I checked with six six other communities, and it varied. Uh, anywhere from uh, $35 to 250 for each of these permits. Um, so then I looked at what do we put in for time when we take in an application to go inspect a road or go inspect uh, the town's public way when somebody excavates it. So I arrived at those numbers after reviewing, uh, you know, in fairness of the time we put into it uh, for myself or or uh, the field superintendent who will inspect the road, make sure it's being put back together properly. Or so, what the are these? What are these trenches, Doug? I'm 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 not really aware of the excavation of the trenches. What are they? What are they made? And are they kept on properties? And do, and it's the property's owner's responsibility to take care of these trenches. Correct? Yes, when they dig in. Okay, the trenching permit is when they dig into our roadway. Let's say roadway. The Open public ways when they're in our tree belt or sidewalk area, so on and so forth. Um, I, I want to add that most of these permits um, are taken out by the utility companies. They need to trench across our street. Um, so in a big way, it, it, it doesn't affect the average homeowner or taxpayer. It's, it's your gas company, your Eversource, your um, phone. They, they, they want to trench across our roads all the time to improve their utilities. So. And the road has to go back a certain way, otherwise we, we have to live in only that trench and maintain it. It's not put back together properly. Better um, known as the frost heaps you see yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the other part of the, those two permits is the, the old form was a one-page form, and I added, and, and I don't want to read the whole thing to you, but there, there's a lot that's changed since 2008 before on, on trench and shoring law. Um, in, in OSHA and so on and so forth. So I put some of the policy, some of that policy information on the permit so that the person or the company that's applying uh, understands, you know, the liability and have to follow the, the law. So um, the other one was the driveway permit, um, and, and those were those were running anywhere from fifty to again two hundred dollars. Um, so I I, mo I, I proposed to move from twenty five to fifty again for the amount of time to process, to go out and inspect um, uh, once it's installed. So, I mean, that basically sums it up. And what action are we looking for on this tonight? Meet the approved those. Motion approved. This one would be approved, yeah. Motion accept. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Why, why do you have some of these roads in this flow of the Though that was the, the rose list we've always had, or the most recent list that I, I've had. I, For I global not, fill? Yes. That was passed in 2009? Well, it said that the, that permit was looked at last in 2009, not necessarily updated or fees increased, John. Yeah. 
No, no, no. I'm talking about the roads where you're recommending the flow of the bill. That was the, that's the master list we've been following, I'm told. It was on the old permit. To be quite frank, that was a cut and paste. I didn't add or subtract anything. And again, it's a draft. If there's something in the field can come off there, we can take it off. But, yeah, I mean, Mill Valley is a pretty rough road. You know? I don't know why you would flow over the hill Mill Valley Road. I think it's, and it's high, high travel, and if they don't compact it properly, we have to live with it with phone calls. Yeah, but flow, the flow of the fill is going to create a frosty. If you put the material back, it's going to join to the road on both sides. So, John, are you, does this have to do with the, are you asking him to modify the document? Or? I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm looking at this list, and I was looking at it before last week, and I was wondering why some of these roads are on there. I actually like to make sure that I'd like to see this updated. I think there's yeah. some new roads that have been put in since this was originally done, so that they're yeah, exactly what I'm <coughs> saying. You know, the new roads I can see, but you know, a, a road like Breckenridge or like I said, Mill Valley, that are the roads are trash. They've never been rebuilt. There's nothing there. You know. So. Uh, can There's tree stumps still <coughs> in the middle of those roads. So do we want to approve it, um, subject to update? Of the uh, it's up section here. Part? Yeah, I'm going to abstain from it, but I just have these questions. Jerry, how do you feel about uh, that? I think that's what we should do if we didn't, you know, update this. So Megan's way and things like that that are brand new ropes that we have. I'd like to just see about them, uh, yeah. the ropes updated. Okay, okay. so, so you're modifying your motion. yes, please. Those you know, you just modify your second. <coughs> then, so, so to be clear on my marching orders here. Um, you want an updated list of roads? Are we talking your highly traveled roads? We should be roads. We should be flowable. Are we talking age of roads? I are think we? that this you cut and pasted this list, yep. and I don't think this includes some of the roads that have been added in the last three, four years. And I so would like I would like the list upgraded to include all the roads you feel should be on this list. My my opinion on that, and just as a precursor, my opinion is your highly traveled roads, your, your uh, Loop 47s, your bay roads, your major artery should be flow fulfilled. Um, your side streets, your secondary roads, in my opinion, I, th I think they're fine by going with your standard uh, six inch lift compaction. You know, that's what I'm saying, I'm looking at a low out drive, like should the low out drive really be on there? Right. So, subject to, can you modify it? I mean, Marlon? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I can modify that back to four, five, six rows. It just depends. You know. Okay. So, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. At Senior Center Library are two guys that really should be home doing some schoolwork. So, I am going to pick... like they did a lot of schoolwork. <laughs> I'm going to pick the Fire Department Junior <coughs> Firefighter Program, and we have Mr. Liam Higgins, Mr. Gage spank -Nabel, and their guest, the Fire Chief. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Gage was doing the presentation. He will be, yes. Oh, okay. You're good to go. That's what I have a little bit to do. All right. Okay. So, thank you. Yes. Um, so, you already introduced them. Thank you mm -hmm. for stealing my thunder on that one. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you have the whole program. I've been working on this, uh, trying to implement this for a number of years. Uh, and we have two juniors at Hopkins Academy uh, that were looking for some community service, but then also they're interested in becoming firefighters at some point when they turn 18. So I asked my son to uh, start working on this project with me. <coughs> and, uh, uh, so Gage and Liam both took on the project and researched best practices. We've modeled it after a number of other junior firefighter programs. Uh, I can tell you right now that there's a number of communities that are very interested in what we're coming up with. Uh, so the document's been presented to you and to David for review by legal. And I will hand it over to Gage and Liam. Okay, so I'm Gage, he's Liam, got that established. <laughs> and uh, Liam's going to start off by <clears throat> telling a little bit about the program. So, junior firefighting is pre-fire academy training, which inspires teenagers to think about the field of fire safety. These juniors will practice in non-fire department related training and events to give them a first-hand experience to what is means and to become a productive firefighter and give back to their community. 
Um, we are the first, this is a brand new program. Me and Gage have put a lot of work into it. Um, he's going to explain the program introduction, the overview of what we are going to be creating. So kids often, like very often ask me, like what is junior firefighting and why it is important? As Liam said before, it's basically a pre-fire academy which inspires kids to go into firefighting, but it's they can go into even a broader category such as emergency medicine, state fire marshal, or even like an engineer at the fire department. Uh, there's numerous amount of reasons why this is a uh, benefit and important. So it basically provides a chance for youth to give back to their community and be involved in the community and to uh, creates a sense of togetherness, you can say. Yeah, and uh, it gives way to a new generation of firefighters. Uh, there are I was just gonna say, um, one of the things that we're like really like gonna be looking at is if kids, we're trying to give kids a chance to experience what it's like to be like around police and the fire department. Like some kids don't even know what it's like. And some kids go, oh, a firefighter, that might be a lot of work. Um, but we want to give them a chance to dip their fingers into it and really see if it's something that they want to do. Because if they get a chance to do so, then they might really become interested. And uh, if you become a junior firefighter, you basically get a year of training. You begin at 16 and a half, and when you turn 18, you're legally able to go and assist. It's a support only. We will not be right up against the flames. That's not in our protocol. We will be supporting the firefighters, though, mainly. Yeah, big support, any support on this already. Mm -hmm. department is very beneficial mm -hmm. to just making it succeed and grow. Yeah. So as the son of a fire chief, he's very familiar with how much I'm going out all the time. Mm -hmm. You guys are familiar with the issue we have with recruiting call force firefighters. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that in the past it was average that we would get at least two firefighters out of Hopkins Academy upon graduation and that's gone down to zero uh, as a standard. Just. Uh, you know, they're off to college and they don't have the time to commit. So what we're looking to do is try and initiate this at a young age, at 16, where they can come in and start seeing what's going on. And um, I'm hoping that it will spur some folks that are planning maybe on staying in the area. Uh, I can also tell you that the city of Northampton, um, the 4-H, Tom Wachdevitz had actually approached them about doing this program. and because they're a complete 100% full-time department, it was a little bit more logistically problematic for them. Uh, you know, they, they did try the program, but it wasn't working out quite well uh, for them. So the chief had sat down with me and we had discussed, I told him we were looking to do this and it was the second step. Uh, so he's very interested because he's willing to push maybe some folks our way if they're, you know, if they're willing and interested and they meet the requirements. And then also uh, uh, the town of Hatfield is interested in looking at this one when we're done as well. So I think they've put together, um, like I said, best practices. We're modeling it after some of the uh, some of the training and guidances. It's a national standard that they they researched and put together. So we're not we're not just pulling this out of the air. We're using some really good uh, some good uh, foundational material for it. I know, I know you heard it before, but I've been after the school committee for a couple of years now. You know, the people that are going off to college, if they're interested in wastewater, drinking water, fire department, police department, they're going out to get their degrees, maybe, to think about their community and, and the, the service that they might have to give, to, to give back to them at some point, just like you guys are doing right now, you know. So and it's I, been the first time in four years that it, it, it's too bad the students have to take the incentives. I wish the school committee would really look at this and say, we really need to get into this, you know? Actually, I can tell you that Annie and I have been in some initial discussions, and I think she she actually brought that forward, that yeah. uh, we're working on, uh, they're obviously working really hard on how they can, they can uh, you know, diversify at Hopkins, to maybe see less folks going out to the trade schools. And, mm -hmm. So we're working closely with them to see if we can maybe bring in a program which we're modeling after the city of Ware uh, and another community out in central Massachusetts that has had really successful numbers with this and bringing a whole new dimension into the schools for you know a really important uh, profession that's really having a hard time, like you're saying, with you know water folks. And it's the same thing in the fire service. We're not seeing the number of paramedics 
not seeing the number of firefighters available. So we're hoping that this will spark some of that interest. So just as a practical matter, I mean, from a, a supervisory standpoint, so you have X number of people interested in the program, how is the program going to be run within the department? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we're, what we're doing is uh, either myself or an assigned officer will be responsible for overseeing this. So ultimately, I would be responsible for it. That's why it's such a extensive um, process for them to get on board. So we would be sitting down with the parents, clearly explaining all this, so they have a full understanding of what we're doing here. Uh, obviously, like we said, there's no there's no fire experience here. This is strictly they're coming to drills where um, they're not even climbing ladders over six feet high. We don't we don't need to injure anybody at this point. Um, so anyway, so that's set up. So the oversight will be myself, my deputy, or or one of the officers assigned to that. Uh, the junior firefighters themselves. Uh, looking at best practices is that they always have some sort of officer um, that's in charge of that at their level. So there would be two junior fire officers that would oversee their group so that it's not adding on to us to you know send out emails, to send out training flyers, to uh, we're looking at community service that they would be coming in to do. Uh, keeping track of time because you can see part of it is based on the number of hours they did where they'd be receiving a stipend. Uh, so those folks are going to be really busy with that that portion. Um, there's no additional funding requested for this. It will be coming out of my, my training and temporary wages. So there's no additional funding being requested from the town. And we've been in discussions on how many we want to bring on board, what we feel is a good span of control, and we're going to follow uh, the incident command structure. We're looking between five and seven maximum that would be allowed. Do you have others that are interested? Oh, yes, there's been numerous amount of people who actually came up to me and asked about it. Good. It's great. Yeah, great. Super. Any females? <laughs> we don't know yet. You don't know other, other schools? You gotta open it up. Yeah. 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 So just to give you a little overview of what these gentlemen have already accomplished on top of other members of the Promerito, they were instrumental in our active shooter training at the mall. These were our victims and a number of other Hopkins <laughs> Academy uh, members. Uh, they've also both of them were instrumental in helping with us get all those toys down to Shriners and to Bay State Children's this year. And uh, the Santa Claus event with Park and Rec and everything, every chance they have, they've been stepping up and helping us with it. So they're really showing that they, they really want to move forward with this and um, just waiting to hear back from the legal side to make sure okay. everything's in order. Okay. Just wanted to present that to you. So any, uh, any further questions for the gentleman? Um, absolutely 100% in forward. favor of it. Absolutely. Okay, so um, somebody want to make a motion subject to certainly. legal review, obviously. I certainly will make that motion. Welcome aboard. Second. Legal review. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great job, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. No shout out to. Uh, Jessica and Kelly and oh, Steve, I'm sure, are glued to the set right now. <laughs> okay, so we'll skip over the intent to convert for now and can jump to the uh, library and, and senior center updates. Yes, everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, uh, library? Hi, so we are here to get, first of all, your um, stamp of approval we hired last night. Um, the trustees voted to hire Mark Sullivan of DA Sullivan to be our OPM and also to have DA Sullivan um, be our clerk of the works. The contract has been passed through David and through our attorney. We sent it to him uh, when we received it and the um, trustees have voted in favor of it. Well, the clerk of the works is usually a person, not a company. So how does that work? Well, it's someone that will work for DA Sullivan. Okay, so they're going to be the hiring for the clerk of the works. Yep. Not necessarily. Well, they have their own clerk of the works, or do they go they, out? It is, it's an employee of DA Sullivan. Yeah, it is an employee. They're in house. And this is all within um, confines of your budget? It is. They were, you know, a little bit higher than we had hoped, but it is within the confines. 
any questions on the hiring of DA Sullivan? Uh, were they the low bid or? So they're continuing on from their services okay. for planning and design. So yeah, you, you guys went through a procurement process a while back on this okay. one. So. I'm huge in favor of that rather than blaming each other. Exactly, yeah. So we have continuity, which is great. Yep. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the second thing the library yep. is asking for is the permission of the select board um, to let us go forward with without um, a kind of giving your consent now that we get an architect, that we can just hire the architect, we expect. I mean, we are hoping it's the same architect that we had before, but we have to wait for the, you know, the bidding process and all of that to go through. Mm -hmm. um, it would help the whole project. The seniors are anxiously awaiting an architect, so it would help us expedite matters if you would allow us to just let the trustees sign off on it and it will go work. And are the trustees interviewing, or is it the building committee interviewing? Or so the way it will work, we we actually made a mistake at first. Yeah. We asked for a proposal directly from the architect, but actually the OPM acts as our owner's project manager. So they, so they Mark himself will okay. negotiate with um, Johnson Roberts. Okay. Okay, does anybody have an issue with that? Yeah? No? What you're leaning towards then is who you've had right along. Yeah, and it it is. They, were, they were fantastic. I mean, yeah, we were very happy with them. We were really happy with the architect. We thought it was a good fit. Um, Worked well with the OPM. Yeah, but we obviously need to see a proposal. You know, we yeah. need to see their proposal before we say that. You might want to reach out to the Municipal Building Committee to go give them an update as to what's going on there, too. I'm sure that they um, Yeah, Allison updates them regularly. She actually talked to David Tudor yesterday. So, yeah. We, we definitely keep them updated. We're looking for a, a one of, for a member of the municipal building committee to join our building committee. So um, typically our building committee consists of a select board member, a building committee member, members of the town, friends, member, trustees. So we try to represent. Okay, anybody want to make a motion on that? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great, thank you. And the Senior Center, Mr. anything Green. new? Looking forward to working with their architect and library, architect and, archi architect and OPM mm -hmm. to do the site plan for our project. Mm -hmm. And we should say, I don't know if Molly has mentioned to you that we actually are meeting on a regular basis. I don't know if you told them that, but um, aside from our separate building committees, we have a group that meets between the two organizations regularly. We're actually meeting in tomorrow so that we can always kind of keep in touch and compare notes. So besides our OPMs working together, both um, groups are working together. Okay. And that meeting's tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yes. It's at 4 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 4 o'clock? Yeah. That's okay. It. I'm supposed to be there, right? In the senior yeah. time. It's okay. What, what's that room? 112. Senior Center. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't have it on my calendar, and I kept thinking there's got to be a meeting coming up here. So, okay. We had it last week, and we'll have one this week. Yeah. And we're, we just decided to meet as needed, and we felt that right now we needed more organization. It might be time for the, you know, a few weeks go by, but. Yeah, I think I think for some reason I've dropped off that thread because I couldn't find it. I don't know what happened, but okay. So four o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, we should probably uh, just give folks an update on the planning board meeting um, from Tuesday, just to touch on that. Um, so, and you know, there's an article in the paper too. So at the planning board meeting on Tuesday night, um, there was a fair amount of dialogue regarding the uh, relationship between the location of the senior center and the, the current legion, um, and there were several members of the Legion present at that meeting expressing concern about the possibility of lost parking space given the planned location of the senior center. Um, and so again, there's was, there was a fair amount of uh, comment at that meeting and I know the Phil Palumbo, your 
your OPM, the senior community center's OPM, was present to field many of those questions. And then there was an agreement that um, <coughs> there was more work to be done. Um, it was offered to the Legion to have a meeting um, subsequent to that to make sure that everybody's concerns were heard, you know, because a large planning board public meeting like that, there are a lot of people that pull you aside after and have things to say, so it seemed like it might be worthwhile to have a smaller meeting, but, um, you know, they, they've declined that at this point, although that may occur in the future, so uh, just be aware of the fact that there is some, some concern about that. Um, and obviously, if you saw the two petitioned warrant articles that got added today, uh, that would be obvious, but I'm just mentioning it as part of this update. So that's something that will continue to stay close to and try to continue to keep the uh, folks at the Legion engaged in this process to make sure we can find um, some sort of cooperative solution. Jay? We were disappointed that, that the um, conversation today could not, did not happen and would like a little direction, I guess, from the select board since you have appointed our committee. I'm assuming in the uh, best interest of time and money, we should continue forward with our plan to build a senior center as our schedule is now scheduled. Uh, that's my assumption that, I mean, at this point, we're responding to multiple town meeting votes in favor of the senior center and it, again I would just speak from for myself I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth but um, yeah we're neighbors and and I'm hoping that we find resolution to the issue uh, no one's interested in in harming any other civic organization um, certainly not veterans but again you have to be present to have the conversation so um, you know it, Certainly, if anybody else feels differently, but the presumption is we we are charged with getting these buildings up and running, and we're on a tight timeline. Um, so I'm assuming that we're moving forward. Regardless of how we feel about anything, the town has voted. We need to go forward. Yes, but that's our job. And the only one, the only one question I had: um, when that property was surveyed, was the easement surveyed? <coughs> The easement, yes, it was. Okay. Actually, we did a second survey of the, the sewer easement. easement. No. The, the right of way. The right of way. Yes, the thirty. Because feet. the right of way is thirty feet. That's yes. correct. The other way, that's a whole another row of cars. Mm -hmm. If you were going to go with the original driveway well, cut. Well, so it, we originally went with the new curb cut. Yeah. Then we heard from the Legion, and they said you're going to lose a whole row of cars. They're so not. talking with the fire chief and the police chief. We redesigned it. We'll use the existing curb cut for the emergency entrance. Mm -hmm. The cars will stay parked there, and the road will be, it will still be parking lot, but it will be striped to indicate don't park here. This is, you know, in and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, Joyce, you, are you in agreement that we just, we're continuing to move with these projects? Yeah, I mean, that's what the town meeting has uh, determined. Okay. Town meeting votes. Votes and yeah, and the voters too. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, I mean that's our position at this point. Um, again, as things develop, as things come up, um, we just need to stay in really close contact. Jen and Jerry, you're sitting on their their building committee, right? Okay. And then we have the joint meeting, um, where I'm present and David are present between the two committees, and I'm on the library building. So we'll just keep these updates coming to make sure you guys are kept abreast of it. And will you also continue to try and have a conversation where the Legion can be involved in? I, I reached I reached out uh, to them today after the cancellation and made it clear that, you know, certainly from my standpoint and, and that we would discuss it tonight, but I, I thought that the that we were very much open to continuing that dialogue. Or I should say continuing having a dialogue. Um, I guess, you know, continuing some of the uh, understanding of the, some of the concerns expressed on Tuesday night. So. Yeah, so we'll we'll stay the course on that and see how it goes. It, okay. I don't think you really answered my question, but the easement, are you going to put parking on that easement now? Yes. Okay. That's that was that was the only question I had with what I could get out of the meeting I watched. Yes, we're gonna have parking on that easement. Okay. After we've dug it up. Okay. There's a lot of inform yeah, information yeah, and we'd yeah. love to fill you in if you had any yeah. questions. No, no, no. I just I'm, 
that was the only real question I had because it looks like there's probably room for 20 more cars over there. Mm -hmm. If all those trees are removed and that easement's uh, being accessed, you know, to its full limit. There is an ADA requirement that we have a sidewalk that will go right along the trees. Mm -hmm. They'll be lit up because the owner, Mr. Coach, doesn't want to have them cut down, although he offered to pay for that and replace so them. They're on town property. They're on the coach's property. No, they're on the easement. So, so one thing I'd, I'd actually like to propose, and it's pr maybe it's a discussion for tomorrow's 4 o'clock meeting, maps, but I, I think sooner rather than later, we should really find a way to have some sort of a public meeting about these projects. Um, there's so, well, embrace yourselves. There's a lot of misinformation floating on, <laughs> floating, floating around. You know, forum scheduled in the room saved at Hopkins for the 15th of March. But, and that's what I've been telling people that yeah, I is thought. Is that too far out? I, I don't know. No. So we should probably talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe we need to do something. Yeah. Maybe we need to do a couple just because. The, the driveways and all of that, the DPW just received the plans for the Route 9 project. So maybe we should really take a look at, at what's there, make sure it matches up what the building committee's got going on over there at the Legion parking lot. I haven't got to that page yet, but. Well, mostly we're just going underneath it. And, yeah. you know, and we'll be done long before Route 9 comes along. Mm -hmm. And there, have, there have been, um, I know I've received a couple of phone calls with people who have some questions or suggestions about the design or, you know, whatever. So we'll, I'll make sure those continue to be funneled to the, the building committees too, so we can get that to people. I think okay. that goes a long way too. It might help us if you explain the letter that went out last week too when, uh, regarding uh, donations that can be made available. I got some phone calls that said we designed a senior center that didn't have windows built into it because of the way the letter no, was sent okay. out. So if we can clarify, to so help clarify that. One of the things you saw in the warrant article night was, tonight was an article to accept money from the Friends of the Hadley Council on Energy. Mm -hmm. um, because of the town's tight budget, really after salaries are paid and basic expenses there are no no monies left for programs and so all of the money that makes things happen events happen at the senior center comes from the friends the building will be built with windows and doors and all of that this is a, a fundraising opportunity for the friends it has nothing to do with the construction of the building or the contents of the building but if you want to have the divine name on a door plaque, we'd be happy to take your money and use it for friends. That's what that's all Shouldn't about. Shouldn't he be on a window and not a door? Why'd you think of a Well, we're looking for someone for the men's room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're on the committee. <laughs> the Jerry Divine <laughs> Men's <room. laughs> Okay. Anyway, that, that so that was a fundraising it's aspect. It's a fundraising aspect. It has nothing to do with the building and its construction. That is covered. We have budget. We're happy to say the estimates came in for the design development phase and we're online. Yeah, and I've asked that uh, the, <coughs> the Council on Aging coordinate with uh, the Treasurer to make sure that the uh, donations by the Friends are handled according to municipal financial law that there is no misunderstanding. So this is what we did with the library. This is what we're going to be doing with the senior center as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, right. the other thing that I okay. just from that meeting was that I, I think that uh, people were concerned that there was no follow-up to uh, the properties that are j directly adjacent as far as whether or not the select board reached out after we had gone out to see if anybody that was adjacent properties there was willing to sell their land. And I personally uh, met with the abutter to there at the best of the select board um, and wasn't able to get anybody to move off anything as far as uh, purchasing the land that was there and that's what we were you know obviously looking for but I met myself personally we had our discussions and so there's misinformation that those people were never spoke to I did not speak to the by family only because it's not directly adjacent to what we're purchasing. It doesn't make sense that we leapfrog a piece of property to talk about a second piece of property. Yeah. But the direct butter, anyway the direct butter I, I met with personally, and 
and I know that for some reason uh, people don't feel like that happens. So. so it's not too early to say then that the the uh, town property that's a parking lot now is not still going to remain a parking lot? Is that true? The current design of the senior center had the senior center all the way to the east end of the property, given the 40-foot setting setback. Um, and that's what's now trying to be under discussion with the Legion. To, to, to move the property, to possibly move the building westward. To protect some of the parking proximate to the Legion. Okay. So put yeah. most of the pro uh, parking for the senior center towards the Legion side. Now most of the park, the senior center, if we changed everything around, it would cost like three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Let's go back to why it was designed the way right. it, was designed. it was designed. That that was put all the way on that end of the property so that the two functioning areas could utilize both parking there, so that the senior center and the library would be able to utilize the parking lot, and we could have a one-way directional traffic flow as it went through there. Also, the senior center design for the entrance to the senior center is set up with overhangs and overheads and bollards. It's pretty so that there's not any driving incidents that occur and people are able to get out of their car and walk underneath and out of the rain and out of the weather so that they can go into the building. Financially, it doesn't make sense to do that on both sides. And if we split the parking up on both sides, it's A, more expensive and takes away from the utilization from the library to be able to use the parking lot as well. That's why it was set up that way. There was an absolute reason it was thought out, the process had been gone to, we talked about setting that up other places within the location there, it just didn't make sense. And from, uh, personally, I as a select board member, as the custodians of all the buildings in the town of Hadley, would be happy to memorialize that the Legion be able to use the parking a uh, lot of the senior center when they need to, there's gonna be need be some coordination there so that they don't overlap um, and I, I hopefully people saw a little bit of that meeting the other day but as Jane had said that there will be a walkway that's established it needs to be there by by law now or by design now so that with lighting people would be able to walk from the senior center parking lot over across a brand new parking lot including the 30 foot right of way that uh, Mr. Uh, Wojciechowicz has talked about so um, it, it's a pretty, it's a much better system than what's available there. Is there slightly more walking? Absolutely, absolutely. On the, upon the design of that, there'll still be 36 spots uh, of parking left at the American Legion, uh, based on the design that Phil had put together. So we don't want anybody to think all the parking's going away there, or that some of the senior most members that utilize the facility over there are going to have to be walking from the senior center. Needs to be some coordination. Um, it was done for specific reasons um, to take care of the needs of the town and the entire town. And I don't think the Legion was not included in the process. It's just to the best of our ability or the best of the ability of the designers, it was set up the way it, it was set up. And I would think it would be to the Legion's advantage to go through that parking lot and not exit on Route 9 at those two entrances because it's hell to get out of there. You know, they that come around to Middle Street and go out to the lights. That would be an option. So again, hopefully, hopefully we can We've bring folks the to outbreak. the table and, and not not let this perpetuate too much longer because we do need to move forward. And we look forward gonna, to that. Yeah, going to lose the bite at the apple here. Okay, so thank you for the update. Actually, uh, can I add one thing to this? We, the, um, a, few, a couple of the department heads were going to be here at the previous meeting that was canceled due to snow. Uh, we were going to talk about fundraising. I believe that, that we have, um, we're all sort of working in concert to, yeah. to not um, be seen as work, being in competition with each other where fundraising mm -hmm. is concerned. And I just wanted to ask the, the select board, um, that, that you could be very helpful to us in the sense of supporting our fundraising efforts just simply by 
you know, acknowledging gifts that come in, you know, we'd like to pass information to you to make sure that the public is aware of the generosity of mm -hmm. the residents when they make a donation or a sure. business. We could do that as part donation. of this standing item. Great. Yeah, right. we'd be happy yeah. to do that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Great. Jane, Great. thank you. Thank I'm you only all. doing one mentor. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see, we've got uh, ambulance service update. Uh, yeah, so um, just, bring a, tomorrow night. just bring the select board up to speed where, where we are at with that. So we met, uh, remember we went out for bid, we had the one proposal, the proposal came from Action EMS. Um, Action EMS came in, um, did a, a great presentation. It was very well received by the work group. Um, but price tag was certainly more than what we're paying now, but also the services that they were proposing that they provide were different from what, and, and more significant than what uh, Amherst is currently providing to us. We then invited Amherst to come in, um, even though they hadn't proposed on it. And we had that meeting. Um, it was. It was a positive meeting. Um, they provided us with some updated data points that we hadn't actually um, seen before in terms of response times and, and number of overlapping calls, you know, when, when there might be multiple calls going on in Hadley. It was nothing that we had actually seen previously. So that meeting went well, but um, they also made it clear at that meeting that, um, you know, they, I think the terminology was that they felt that the market has spoken and aren't necessarily tipping their hand relative to, you know, we're paying 140 now, whether or not, you know, the 140 is going to become 145 or 150 from them, um, or if they want to jump us now to a significantly higher number. And so the jury's still out on that one. So we talked after they left and agreed that we thought it made sense, given that we had like apples and oranges to, to compare, that it to finish this all off, it was appropriate to ask action to say, look, at, you know, these are the services that we're getting from Amherst right now. Could you give, <laughs> easy there. Could, could you give us, um, take a look at that and try to look at something that, that, that's more comparable so that we're, you know, have a fair comparison. So action did that via a four page memo and tomorrow night uh, at six o'clock. Oops, don't go in at four o'clock. Okay, four o'clock, six o'clock. So at six o'clock tomorrow night, um, we're meeting again just to pour through that memo to determine whether or not that will lead us to say, okay, this makes no sense. We need to stay the course with Amherst at this point, or any other action that might be taken there. So that that's where we're at. All right, Tracy. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Anything you want to add? Do you think now that we've got all the apples on the table, it'd be worth going out to bid again? No. Well, let's have our discussion tomorrow night. We'll that's, bring it back yeah, to you. I think that's a big part of our discussion tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's see. We have cemeteries. Oh, we're going to skip over the cemetery. That's right. We're skipping you're over sleeping, cemeteries. You're sleeping. Going to the cemetery? <laughs> no, we're just, no, we're skipping over that. Um, so we have 434 River Drive, Chapter 61A, and Time to Convert. David. Uh, so we have uh, the land that's currently in Chapter 61A coming out of uh, that status. We have the right of first refusal. Our recommendation is to waive that right of first refusal and to waive the 120-day waiting period in which the town may exercise that right of first refusal. And this is a half-acre parcel, David, you want to describe? It's only half an acre that's coming out of 61? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Half an acre. Half an acre. Half an acre. Yeah. Be included in the sale of other property. Okay, so this is uh, 434 River Drive in Hadley. Yeah, we have, no, we have no use for this. <laughs> Well, you don't have to disparage the half acre. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it like that, is that there's no municipal use okay. for that property. All so right. Anybody? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Where, where exactly is this? It's the Nuttleman property. This is the day house, the Rutherford house. That's the little green one in the middle? Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there a second on this? 
John, we're waiting for you. Yes, I'll second that. Okay. Jesus. Any further discussion? I'm always curious when Jerry's the silent, so yeah. there's a reason. Yeah. He's, he's, a saying saying that. Saying is there he's got a stain. I'm buying you know, the property. I got it. Wait a minute, then will the fire station fit up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. I'm stained. <laughs> Yeah, I was making me nervous when you asked me, like, what, you what's going on? You guys are playing your cards that nobody studied that piece of information I, very I well. I did, that's why I moved it. Okay. You didn't read it? Yeah, I did, but I didn't remember. No, I didn't read the whole thing. I just looked at the map quick. Yeah, I didn't see the board here. All right. Okay. So, uh, we do have executive session. Is there anything else we need to cover this evening? Okay, David, nothing in your report. We'll read that and get back to you with any questions. All town meeting all the time. And other things. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any announcements before we move to executive? I just want to thank everybody that was involved with the uh, Fragile X fundraiser that was held at the American Legion in Donna Hadley. It was a wonderful event. Uh, I really appreciate all the help from every all the legionnaires and all the people who were volunteers to help with it. Raised the fifteen hundred dollars, yep. which will be put uh, in the right direction. Thanks to everybody involved. Okay, I guess I have a few this evening. We haven't had a meeting for a couple of weeks, so um, we've had a few uh, passings in Hadley, and I'd like to extend our uh, condolences to people, the family of Eleanor Karish, the family of Leo Blizniak, uh, John McCreskey, whose uh, sister is Elvira Balut, <coughs> Jane Meekum, and she was a toper, and we also had um, Randy Randall Willie Broadhurst, uh, who was a Legion member, and marched in every parade. He was there last year. Every town meeting. Every town meeting. Every yeah. town meeting mm -hmm. he was there. and um, So he passed and will surely be missed this year at the, uh, for the parade also. So condolences to all of their families. Um, and we also had the passing of um, George Ritter uh, from Hockenham, uh, husband of Norma, who were uh, big into helping with the Mardi Gras every year. George was from down in that area and uh, brought his uh, New, Orleans. New Orleans and brought that up here with him and did a great job at the Senior Center in, in doing that. He was also past member of the board um, for the Senior Center and an ombudsman for many years serving on the COA board for quite some time. Uh, so, I, you know, we extend our condolences to Norma and their family also. Okay, nothing else? All right. Motion so adjourned. Make a motion to go into executive session. Yes. For the purpose of contract negotiation uh, with respect to collective bargaining, uh, we will not reconvene in open session. Okay. Um, as Chair, I state that uh, holding this discussion in open session could have a detrimental impact to the town of Hadley. We'll call a vote. Um, Mr. Westkins, I believe you have a conflict of interest. Yes, but I can still vote to go into executive session until that time. Okay, so Mr. Westkins? Yes. Divine? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Chungo? Yes. All right, All right. Good night, session. everybody. Thank you. Good night. It's going to be quite a while. We'll be a while.